Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be covering from round 4 of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2022. It's Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces against the last year's winner uh, Jordan van Forest uh, and it's uh, really really a complicated game so let's dive straight into it. Magnus uh, with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. He goes for the red the opening. Uh, we have d5, g3 and the g6. Uh, um, Forest goes for the uh, symmetrical variation here with bishop to g2, bishop to g7 and d4 now so uh, a very nice symmetry on the board knight to f6 and both players castle now castles castles and c4 and now uh while there are some games where black continued the symmetry with c5 it is much more uh, natural to play c6 here uh put um, a more defense to our d5 pawn and we just uh, continue development but we still have to figure out how to develop this knight here obviously you can't go to c6 so probably uh we'll develop it to d7 but then we block our bishop so maybe we develop the bishop first then we develop the knight and, and so on but you'll see so b3 magnus says he's going to fianchetto the uh dark square bishop as well and now bishop to f5 before going knight b to d7 uh we have bishop to b2 knight b to d7 and now e3 by magnus we have knight to e4 uh now here you have to uh you don't have to go knight to e4 you could also play d captures on c4 d captures on c4 is a move black can play pretty much uh, at any point um, uh th throughout the opening uh but uh we, we will not see it here so knight to e4 uh we have knight to c3 and knight captures on c3 b captures and now bishop to uh, to e4 so usually we say you don't capture on c3 uh, not on c3 you don't capture if you don't gain anything so here uh van forest uh, captured on c3 to put the bishop on e4 and here it's uh, actually a really good piece so queen to e2 magnus uh, develops the queen connects the rooks and now e6 uh, the light square bishop is out of the cage so we can now close it uh and uh, here uh usually uh rook f to c1 or rook a to c1 is played but magnus goes for a bit more rare rook uh, uh, f to d1 uh, and now uh, we have a5 uh, so here bishop to f1 now magnus is preparing knight to d2 to kick away the bishop from e4 and he doesn't want to allow the trade of the light square bishop so first bishop to f1 and now uh, we have bishop captures on f3 so not even waiting for the for the bishop to get attacked queen captures on f3 and now knight to c5 uh putting the knight on a very very sneaky square because uh, if the knight is captured of course the bishop on c3 uh, will hang uh, and you will not have anything to contest uh, black's very strong dark square bishop so here bishop back to e1 uh, and now knight to e4 so using a tactic to nicely remaneuver uh, to nicely maneuver the knight over to e4 uh, and now we come to the actual new move on the game and that is bishop to d3 so now as of move 17 we have a completely new game uh the knight is under attack and we just want to capture it and of course win this pawn so uh we have f5 defending this uh sort of a sort of a dutch pawn structure as uh, van forest is dutch uh and here rook a to c1 uh, now preparing some ideas maybe c captures on d5 uh, and of course uh, hoping that black opens up the c file but that will probably not be the case uh and here we have g5 uh saying that uh, uh black doesn't mind opening up the the position a little bit as uh the, it's it's a very closed uh, structure both on the king side and in the center of the board so you will not be able to attack that black king so here we have queen back to e2 by magnus and g4 now uh, we have bishop captures on e4 and now f captures on e4 uh, if you play d captures on e4 then this d5 move can be very annoying for example captures captures we're, we're gonna see captures and now rook to c5 uh, threatening to capture on d5 and after d4 something like this because the bishop covers uh, the d4 square e captures on d4 and, and we ended this with black having uh, a lot of pressure on the king's side but white having the fast d pawn so white should be should be much much better here uh, so instead we have f captures on e4 this nicely opens up the uh, f file uh, and now queen captures on g4 but also it uh, includes sacrificing of a pawn so queen to e8 by, uh, by black and now c captures on d5 uh, again c captures on d5 uh, you never want to play this because then you allow rook to c7 and this is just terrible for black so instead we have e captures on d5 this also fixes black's pawn structure and now rook to c5 puts pressure on the a5 pawn and now how can black the, uh, defend this pawn uh, well first uh, we have h5 uh, chasing away the queen from such an active square queen to h3 and now we have queen to f7 
putting pressure on the f2 pawn so again you can't go after the pawn because if the bishop moves we're going to capture on f2 uh, so queen g2 defending and now uh, we have a4 advancing the pawn and the situation on the clock is some uh, 42 minutes for magnus and 31 minutes for for van for uh, and here we have b4 uh, you could also play rook to a5 that's possible then we uh, sorry about that then we trade everything captures captures rook rook goes to a8 attacks the bishop and now we can play b4 so something like this is possible where black would be left with this uh, funny looking pawn um, uh, here on a4 but then again you will always be able to defend it with, with b5 so you could go for this uh, but instead magnus goes for b4 uh, and now we have queen to d7 now Van Forest is ready to advance that H pawn. Uh, we have B5. Magnus now wants to open up the structure here. He wants to play Rook to C1 and put pressure on the C6 pawn. Uh, we have H4, ignoring what's happening on the queen side. That this is the the correct way to play. Uh, and now Rook D to C1. Now you are threatening to capture here. And now we have Rook to F6, defending here, but also preparing some Rook to G6, Rook to H6 action if the position opens up. So B captures on C6. B captures and now g4 uh, a very very tricky move because if it doesn't work then you're just gonna get uh, destroyed here uh so uh, magnus of course wants to play h3 and have a very solid setup here on the king side as well and then he's just gonna base the entire game around the weakness of the c6 pawn so of course uh, uh van forest doesn't want to allow that he plays h3 he gives up another pawn uh just uh so he prevents magnus from playing h3 so queen captures on h3 and now rook a to f8 uh, so what do you play here? Uh, queen back to g2, and then now comes rook to g6, going after the uh, the pawn here. And now you could play h3, but uh, it, it's um, well if h3, the rook will come uh, to, to f3, and it's a very very passive position for white. You're never getting that queen out of there. It's uh, you're you're just going to be defending for the rest of the game. So instead, Magnus goes g5 with the idea of advancing the pawn to h4. Now this is really really impressive stuff so rook to f5 going after the pawn here uh, queen to f5 would have been a, a, a bit better for black but we're gonna discuss this in a little bit so here h4 magnus defends this pawn and now you want to uh, sacrifice something here it would be great to sacrifice the bishop for the g5 pawn the problem is if you play bishop to f6 uh, we can play rook captures on c6 and then it doesn't work if bishop captures g5 we just capture the rook on g6 with check and then of course uh, white is just completely winning so instead after h4 bishop to f8 is played it doesn't waste the move really because it comes with tempo then you're going to play bishop to e7 and then we're going to sacrifice the bishop for the g5 pawn so rook 5 back to c2 and now bishop to e7 now getting ready to capture this pawn here and there is one really good move for Magnus here, and that is king to f1. While the king is on f1, there isn't all that much black can do here, uh, but that, that is uh, easier said than played. Uh, so here, Magnus plays rook to b2, prepares the... Uh, the, double up on the b file and put some rooks on, on b8 and b7 maybe uh, both players are now down to 12 minutes uh, and here we have bishop captures on g5 and bishop captures on g5 is not a great move as it loses the game for for jordan uh, what you should have played here is just rook g captures um uh, on g5 and then after h captures rook g captures and then we trade queens queen uh, sorry uh, we trade uh, everything for the queen queen captures bishop captures and then it's queen and bishop versus two rooks and the bishop uh, with uh, pretty much an, an equal position but uh, uh, you don't uh, like this against uh, magnus or, or pretty much against anyone because what if those rooks just come off the board it looks like you might not be able to hold this uh, but this was in fact the way to equality in the actual game bishop captures and g5 was played and now magnus plays king to f1 uh, this is the only move that wins the game but it also comes with a problem you you have to continue playing this uh, 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 very very well uh, and now it doesn't matter what black plays you're still going to lose uh, because, well, uh, you can't really move the bishop. Uh, uh, if you move the bishop, you lose the rook. If you play queen d6 to add more defense to the rook here, we're just going to capture on g5. And after rook captures on g5, queen h3. And now you don't really have a, any sort of a perpetual here because after queen g4 check rook here, we're going to play queen d1. And now we're just up a piece and you don't have an attack. If uh, queen h2, we're going to play rook c to b1. And, uh, well anything you throw at white white will just move the king all the way uh, here and the bishop nicely covers f2 so th th there's no problem there so in the game queen to a7 was played by 
uh, Fang Forest uh, saying that uh, th there is something hidden in the position and in fact there is uh, because this queen a6 check is um, uh, well a, a bit troublesome for white uh, but there is a move that uh, solves all of this for Magnus so uh, feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being uh, rated almost 2,900. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is king to e2. Uh, that's the good stuff. Uh, this is the only move that successfully parries the threat of queen to a6. Because now if queen to a6, we're going to play king d1. And after queen to d3 with check, we're going to block with rook to d2. And now after, let's say, queen to b5, there is no way to continue checking the white king. Now we don't capture, but rather play queen to g4. So you had to see all of this in order to win this game. Now the rook is hanging, the bishop is hanging, and only after we move the rook, we're going to capture on g5. And now we are just uh, completely winning with white. However, after this queen to a7, Magnus played queen to g4. It seems like it's, uh, it's a nice addition to the line that we've uh, shown because the queen is already on g4 so the rook uh, is kind of hanging and then the bishop is hanging uh, but it allows um, uh, black to throw in a nice queen to a6 check and now what do you play here uh, well, you could move the queen back, then we just go back with queen to c8, so nothing is happening really. Uh, if you play rook to e2, then you're even going to lose the game, because after queen to c8, what do you play here? There's no, no good move for white. We're threatening rook captures on f2 check, and we're going to pick up the queen here. And you don't really have anything better. You're going to capture here, captures, captures, queen captures here, and this is now, of course, a winning for black. So Magnus played king to g1, uh, but now, again, a very tricky position, and, uh, well... You have to play uh, <laughs> play it very precisely. Uh, Jordan plays rook to g7. And this is just a, a wonderful move to find. Uh, because this is hanging. This is hanging. But the problem is even if you... Uh, somehow give up uh, this rook, this rook will also be attacked. By playing rook to g7, uh, the other rook will not get attacked and you will have a sufficient counterplay. Uh, other than this, also c5 is very nice because the queen now uh, guards the rook here. So those are the two ideas you, you can consider. Uh, but uh, okay, in the game rook g7 was played uh, and now you can't capture the rook. If you capture the rook, then it's just bishop to f4 check and you're lost. The queen covers f1, bishop covers h2, rook covers g1 and g2, so you only have the h h1 square and after h1 queen to f1 will be checkmate so easy to miss but uh, it is there uh, so after rook to g7 rook to b8 check was played by magnus but now uh, jordan just blocks this we have bishop back to d8 opening up a discovery on the queen here uh, and now it seems that magnus will have to give up the queen so rook captures on d8 check first uh, now comes rook to f8 blocking this uh, you, you don't want to play king h7 because then rook d7 and you can't capture the queen you, you have to capture the rook uh, so instead of course uh, rook blocks with rook to f8 now comes rook captures on f8 king captures and bishop to b4 check uh, but even this is not enough you can't shake off um, uh, the king from defending the rook so king g8 queen captures on g7 with check king captures and now a3 so now we have this position where magnus has a bishop and the rook against the queen and uh well uh, if you look at it uh, the only way black can make some progress or white for that matter is uh well, impossible, uh, because you can't uh, get get over the, the c5 square, white has perfect control of that, and you can't really do anything about uh, this uh, on the king side either. Uh, either, even if you give up this pawn, it's still, you know, pretty much drawish, so king to g6 was played, king to g2, king h5, rook to h1 now, adding a defender here, and now, uh Jordan just finds a nice uh, nice repetition here he plays c5 gives up a pawn and goes for this queen g6 check king f1 queen to a6 check king to g2 you could also move the king uh to e1 but it doesn't seem like white will be winning this game so Magnus agrees to a repetition here king f1 queen to a6 check king g2 and he was in this position on move 52 that the players agreed to a draw uh, so uh, really, really a tough game. There was a win uh, in that one moment for Magnus, but he had to find not one move king, but rather two move kings with king to f1, king to e2. Uh, if not, then, uh, well, he, he will be struggling to, uh, to get a draw. Uh, as you've seen in the game and uh, for for the last 10 moves uh, player players were extremely low on time uh, so uh, the the couple a couple of less moves were you know made uh, below the 10 minute mark so this is uh, in, in really a very very uh, well 
uh, correct game. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This does not help uh, Magnus in achieving his new set uh, goal of reaching 2900. As of course, with any draw, he loses rating as he's the highest rated player here. So now he has one win and three draws uh, in this tournament. Uh, but with this uh, uh, metric, he, he he just loses rating. So I think now he's down like a, a point and a half uh, for, for, for the duration of the tournament. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, congratulations to everyone who spotted that King F1, King to E2 maneuver. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Eddie Smutin, uh, Stephen Wentworth, Louis Bomet, uh, Frederick Witt, and Lance Weatherly for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this wonderful event, uh, and of course, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.